tomorrow I just live from day to day And I, I don't borrow from its sunshine For its skies may turn to gray And I don't worry about my future For I know what Jesus said And Today he walks beside me for he knows what lies ahead. Many things about tomorrow. Now, I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds
Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Lafayette Harris, our music director, for starting us out by recalling on our God, Emmanuel, O come, O come, Emmanuel. What a good way to start worship, calling on our God to come to us, Emmanuel, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Reverend Clark Bradley, pastor at Fourth Presbyterian Church in the Bronx, and this is our streaming worship service for today, February 28, 2021. I'm joined today by Lafayette, who just played our prelude, and later on we'll be joined by Elder Donald Bacha. He's our worship assistant today. He'll be leading in our prayers and our affirmation of faith. Welcome to our members and friends on YouTube and Facebook. And a special welcome to our visitors, especially our first-time visitors. Thank you for joining us today to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me bring up our order of worship for today so that you can see what we'll be doing in the worship service. Here it is. You can see that Lafayette just played the prelude. This is the greeting, and in just a moment, we'll move to our call to worship from Psalm 51. Just one other note before we move forward with the call to worship, and that is that all of the graphics that we'll be using, at least the ones that have important information like this call to worship, the lyrics to our songs, the words to the prayers, the scripture readings, things like that, you can get those graphics on the church's Facebook page. They'll be in a separate post from the streaming service itself. So they'll be in a separate post. And you can also find them on the email that you received, giving you the links to our service. They should be attached to that as well. So that will that's how you can, if you want to bring up on your own screen or look at later uh, various, some of the graphics we've got here. Now let's, continue, let's begin our worship service with today's call to worship from Psalm 51. This is one of the Psalms of David. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with a willing spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Let us worship God and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do praise you, the King of all creation, the maker of heaven and earth. You are worthy of worship and honor by us, by all creation, by all the angels. You are worship, you are worthy of worship by all created things. So we lift our praise to you now, and we do pray for your spirit to to anoint us, prepare our hearts and minds now, Holy Spirit, so that we can that we can praise from the depths of our hearts our Savior Jesus, so that we can worship him as the Redeemer of the world. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. We come now to our prayer of confession, and Elder Donald is with us now to lead us. Hi, Donald. Hello, everyone. If Donald is going to lead us in our prayers today. So why don't we start with the prayer of confession. Let me bring it up on the screen here. There we go. Okay, Donald, why don't you lead us in prayer? Okay, let us pray. Redeeming God, you send Jesus to live among us and to give us new life by his death and resurrection. We confess that we keep this good news to ourselves. We are silent when we could tell others of your love. We let our fear silence us. We fail to speak the name of Jesus to this dying world. Free our fearful tongue and flame our hearts with zeal for your gospel. So we may boldly witness to the people around us for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You are the Lord 
giver of mercy. You are the Christ, giver of mercy. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, giver of mercy. You are the Lord, giver of mercy. You are the Christ. We come now to our assurance of pardon. You know, friends, after we have confessed our sin, if you know, if you, if you know as believers the holy and righteous God, you know that, that he hates sin. He hates our sins. That's what judgment is, is God's judgment on the sin that he hates. So we need to receive assurance of the mercy and forgiveness that God has offered to humanity through his son, Jesus Christ. Listen to this statement of assurance. It begins with the question, who is it who is in a position to condemn us? And the good news of the gospel is the answer to that question. And the answer is Jesus. Listen now to what that same Jesus has already done for us. Jesus has died for us. Jesus has risen for us. Jesus has ascended into heaven where he continually prays for us. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Friends, believe the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And let all of God's people say amen. 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 And now we come to the passing of the peace. So Lafayette and I can wave. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you, Lafayette. A pleasure. Yep. And all of you who are watching the the live the worship stream with someone else, you can you can greet each other with the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those of you on the if you're watching this on the YouTube or Facebook premieres. You can greet each other in the chat windows. And while you're doing that, let's move on in our order of worship to the children's blessing. Here is our children's blessing graphic. So I'd ask you now, if there are children with you, I'd ask you to have them come forward at this time and receive God's blessing. You have them come forward to the screen and stretch out their hands to receive God's blessing. Heavenly Father, I lift up to you the children who are watching this, this streaming worship service, and I, I lift them up to you, Lord, and pray for your blessing on them. I pray, Lord, for the blessing of eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. I do ask, Lord, that you would open their hearts to receive the mercy of your son, Jesus, that you would open their minds to trust and believe in him as their Savior. I ask, Lord, for this gift of your most supreme blessing for our children. I pray also for, your blessed to, for you to bless them in this world. I ask that you would surround them with your mighty angels, guard and protect them from harm and evil in the week ahead. Lord, help them as they, help them as they go through this, this difficult time we're in as their schools may be opening and they're, they're going back to school, or maybe they're still stuck in a lockdown at school. I do pray, Lord, for you to help them focus their minds, give them good sleep so that they can be attentive and, and, and learn in school. And I pray, Lord, for their teachers in this changing time that you would bless them with wisdom and discernment so that they can effectively teach the students that you have placed under their, or in their responsibility this year. Lord, we pray for your blessing on our children. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. We're moving forward now to our announcements. And let's see, I'd like to bring that up on the screen here. Let's move forward to announcements. Here's our announcements page for today. You see the normal stuff at the top there, uh, that uh, you, the links to our 
our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Uh, I just mentioned, you know, you see that crazy uh, link to with all that, all those alphabet soup at the end of the YouTube channel. Um, if I'd ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you know, it doesn't cost anything. YouTube subscriptions don't cost anything. And if we can get to 100 subscribers, I believe we could get a formal, like a regular name for our YouTube channel, like YouTube dot com slash channel slash fourth pc bronx or something like that so if you you know i'd ask you to subscribe to the channel if you're on youtube or even if you're on facebook just jump over to youtube and subscribe and you can send your prayer requests to fourth pc bronx at gmail.com just put the word prayer in the subject line and please send them by friday night so that we so that we have time to get them Saturday morning at the latest. And if you are listening to this and you did not get an invitation to by email, just send an email to that address, fourthpcbronx at gmail, and just say that you want to be added to our list. And some of you who were getting email, who were getting the email, you might have, we had a disaster last week that really jumbled up our email, uh, our, that Gmail, our Gmail email system. So that got all confused and we may have lost a couple people. So if you uh, got, if you're, if you are not getting the email in the last couple weeks, just please let us know because we had uh, just a, some real severe technical difficulties with our email our, our contact list on our email, on that, on that email address. So Children's Online Sunday School meets at 1015. If you're interested in having a child join, you can contact the church at the email above for details, to get details from Acusia. And also, this is our Sunday for our gospel music special. So let me stop sharing and bring Lafayette up here on the screen so he can tell us a little bit about it. Hello again. Yes, I, I guess last year we were very lucky to be able to uh, get this in, in the sanctuary where we were celebrating Black History Month and the last Sunday of, uh, of the month um, we did last year. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Jason Patterson was played drums on that that day and he's gonna play drums again on this. We're doing a medley uh, and included in the medley, I mean, you'll hear everything, but first is what a friend we have in Jesus. Then we have go tell it on the mountain. And then, and then. When the saints, right? When the saints go marching in. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so, uh, and the other thing I wanted to announce is that uh, Dan Mason, uh, he won't be with us this week. Uh, and that's because he's moved. Back, back to, I guess he used to live in LA before, but he's decided to go back and, and live there again. So he, we, we won't have him anymore in our choir, <clears throat> but we're yeah. having him. Yeah, maybe we could, I don't know if, if we're, you know, because he could actually still do something from there. I'm wondering like, maybe he could make a cameo on Palm Sunday or Easter. That's coming up at the end of the next month. I, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, at least, at least it's possible electronically. You yes, know, right. Whether he whether he he wants to or not, that'll be up to him. But uh, I know a lot of people like hearing his voice. And yes. um, our violin player uh, Michi, what what's her full name? Michi Fuji. Michi Fuji. Okay, she's <laughs> our violin player today, and so we'll be hearing more. We'll be hearing more from her also. And let me move on, and let me bring the announcements page back up on the screen here. And let's see, down under upcoming events, the, I wanted to say something about our session meeting. This is a special session meeting coming up this Wednesday. Normally we meet towards the end of the month, but we need to meet. Uh, I don't know if you remember, it's been, geez, by almost, it's been four or five months now. I think it was in late October, we made a decision not to meet for the, well, for a, a long time, 
we just we thought back then that surely by Palm Sunday, which is at the end of March, that we would be able to meet. Well, now we've you know the virus flared up, and we've got a whole bunch of special, uh, not special of uh, what do they call them, uh, mutations of the virus. Um, so things have changed. We're gonna meet this Wednesday to decide whether we should re should restart live worship on Palm Sunday, which would be March 28th or not, or push it off again for several more months until the, you know, the more vaccines are out, and more people have had a chance to be vaccinated. So that's going to be the main topic of our session meeting, our special session meeting this Wednesday. And one of the reasons I want to mention it to you is to invite you to share your thoughts. We can, uh, we, that the session can consider your thoughts. If you want to send an email, send it again to that fourthpcbronx at gmail.com address. And if you send it by Wednesday midday, we'll be able to share them with, the, share your thoughts for the, the session to consider. So that is coming up and next Sunday, I'll announce whatever the session decides about our, you know, whether we're going to start this on Palm Sunday or not. And one of the things, just to recall, um, some people have said, well, why don't we do both live stream and, and live worship? And unfortunately, we just don't have the technology or the personnel to do that. So one of the issues that we have is going back to live worship. <clears throat> When we do that, we're not going to be able to do these live streams anymore. So we can't do both. If we could, that would be sort of a horse of a different color. But right now, it's a choice between the two. So I wanted to mention that. And if, so if you want to share your thoughts, email the church. And one last item, uh, it's sort of a sad item, the Azucena's family. And again, some of you, since you haven't we haven't been together for basically about a year now. Uh, some of you may almost have forgotten what they look like, but uh, it's uh, the Katakutin's relatives from the Philippines. Their time here in America with the Filipino consulate, uh, I think it was at New York, uh, with their consulate in New York and at their consulate at the UN. Uh, their time there is up and they have to go back to uh, their diplomatic assignment is going taking them back to the Philippines and they will be leaving the U.S. in the next week. So we wish them well and we're going to pray for their safe travel and their, their integration back into life in the Philippines for the kids and I guess for the, the parents and adults too. So it, it's, it's a big transition. They've been here, I think it's seven years. So that's a long time, and especially for the kids. So we'll be praying for them. So that's some of the big news today. So why don't we now move into our prayers of the people. Let me bring our prayer graphic up on the screen here. And I'd ask you to join me now in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are the God who hears his people. So we come to you confident that, that through your spirit, you are hearing our prayers. We do ask, Holy Spirit, that you would perfect our prayers, those that I speak and the prayers that are raised by the, the people listening to this live stream whenever and wherever they're watching it. Holy Spirit, perfect our prayers, raise them up to our Heavenly Father. And we do pray, O oh Lord, that you would, Lord, that you would help us understand the way that you do choose to answer our prayers. Lord, help us to, to understand your answers to our prayers, and we lift them up to you now. Lord, we do lift our prayers up to you for the sick and the shut-in, uh, those in recovery from surgery, and we pray for Reverend Stovall as well. We pray for Akusia Dumphy for her eyesight, and we lift up to you Akusia Abrokwa and pray for strength 
to, to deal with her condition. We pray for Carl and Lord, we lift up to you Daneth and Courtney. We lift all these people up to you, Lord, and we pray for Lisa also. We lift up to you these people. Lord, some of them are facing surgery or, or various medical procedures in the future. Some of them are ill right now. Some of them are recovering. So we do pray, Lord, for their various conditions. Lord, we ask for you to give them strength of body. And we pray for your power to fill their bodies, to, to remove the virus from them, to strengthen and heal their bodies where they were wounded in various ways and by illness or surgery. We ask, Lord, for you to give them strength of spirit as they as they suffer through illness and as they are recovering from illness and surgery. Lord, we pray also for Trevor, that you would strengthen his heart and for Julie as well. Lord, we lift these prayers, these prayers for the sick and shut in up to you and ask for you to give us clear signs of that, that you are answering our prayers. Lord, we also pray for those who are traveling and those who are moving, we pray for the Azucena family as they return to the Philippines. And Lord, it, is, it has been such a long time here. We, we pray, Lord, that you will send them with our, our, our blessings, our prayers, and our love as they depart from America and make that flight to the other side of the world and start restart life new and, and re new for the kids and and restart it for the the parents uh, the, the, all the adults who are going back to the Philippines Lord we ask that you would bless them as, as they return that the, that they would that they would be able to pick up life there again and that they would Lord that they would learn to love their their home country again. We ask, Lord, for this blessing on the Azucena family as they prepare to depart from America and, and return to the Philippines. And we lift up to you, Dan Mason and his, his return to L.A. We pray, Lord, for you to bless him as he leaves us. And we, we do pray, Lord, that you would fill his space and that you, would, that you would grow our choir during this lockdown period, that you would give them strength and prepare them to return whenever it is that we do return to live worship. And we lift up to you, Lord, the session meeting this week and ask that you would bless us with wisdom and discernment to know what to, how to lead this church into the, the future that, that is uncertain at this time. When are we going to return and, and what, will, what will happen when we do? So we lift these prayers up to you as well for our session meeting. Lord, we pray for people who are seeking vaccines. We pray for those who are distributing vaccines and those who are working and manufacturing the vaccines. We ask, Lord, for you to, to rapidly spread the vaccine around and, and make it possible for many people to receive it so that they can be protected from the, the danger of this, of this terrible disease that has struck down so many. We lift up to you, Lord, the, the, the sad passing of the, the marker of 500,000 dead here in America from this disease. Lord, we do lift up to you all who mourn the, the passing of, of friends, loved ones, family, who have, have and, and just people that they may not have known personally, but who they know they know of who have died from the, the the virus. We pray, Lord, that that for you to bless people with comfort and 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 Lord, that you would use this tragedy to to push them to move forward spiritually in this life, draw them closer to you as they. They seek to understand this disaster that has unfolded with the vaccine. Lord, not only have people lost loved ones, but so many people have lost jobs. Lord, the, the economy is so uncertain. 
And so many people have, they, they, they have, maybe they haven't died, but they've become ill from the virus. Lord, we pray for all of them and for those who care for them in our medical system. So we lift these prayers about the virus up to you and ask for relief from this, this pandemic. Lord, we pray also for San Andres Church as they return to worship. And we ask, Lord, that you would protect them from the virus. Lord, we pray now for our nation and ask, Lord, for you to bless, bless us as a nation with wise leadership. I pray especially, Lord, that you would raise up peacemakers, those that you would bless them with the gift of discernment, they can, that they would know the times that we are in and, and how they can bring peace to this troubled nation. Lord, I do pray that, that you would bring peace to our nation, that you would enable this, this country to, to be a, a beacon of, of light in a world that is, that is lost in darkness. And we pray, Lord, for peacemakers, for you to give them wisdom and discernment that they can know what to do, protect their plans and protect their persons from, from those, those powers that, that just love chaos, division, and violence. Lord, we pray that you would suppress and hinder those powers and that you would raise up the, the, the peacemakers and, and that, that they would be empowered at this time. Lord, we pray also for your church in this Lenten season as we come closer to Holy Week. And I pray, Lord, especially for your church, your people, wherever they are persecuted for the name of Jesus. Lord, the, 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 the Easter season is often a time of increased persecution as, as the name of Jesus it becomes more visible around the world. So we pray for your church as they face troubles. We, I pray, Lord, for you to sustain their faith, that you would give st them spiritual strength that is greater than the power of their persecutors, of the greater that their love for your son Jesus would grow deeper than, 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 the, than the evil that comes against them so that they can remain faithful to the end. We pray, Lord, for your people in Africa, in the Middle East, in South Asia and East Asia, wherever people are persecuted for worshiping Jesus. We ask that you would watch over them, protect them, protect their faith, and protect their places of worship as we come close to Easter. We lift these prayers up to you in the name, the, the, the name that is that most precious name of Jesus who taught us to pray his, our Lord's Prayer, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 We come now to our next, our first hymn. Our first hymn is Come and Go With Me. This is, uh, if we were in our old style of worship, this would be that first hymn that we would put right at the beginning of the worship service, because this, this hymn really is, think of the words as they come up on the screen. I'd ask you to sing along and think about these words are a musical call to worship. So our first hymn is coming up next. Come and go with me.
Friends, we come to the time to read from God's word, but before we do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. We come now with the reverse prayer, that not that you would hear us, but that we would hear you, that we would hear you speak clearly through the word inspired by your spirit. Amen. We have two readings today from Genesis chapter, first from Genesis chapter 14. We come to we come to Genesis chapter 14. Here it is. I got it on the screen there now. There we go. Genesis chapter 14, Genesis chapter 14, the last section of it, starting in verse 17, going to 15, verse 6. Remember, we left off with Genesis 12 last week, the call of Abraham and then the, the sojourn in Egypt where Abraham failed God's test. Well, God calls him back to the promised land because God is merciful. And in chapter 13, there's another test. Uh, it's a difficult relationship between, or the, or the relationship between Abram and Lot becomes difficult, and they, they separate. They, they go their different ways. Abram, excuse me, Lot goes to Sodom, the, the infamous, one of the two infamous cities from Genesis, Sodom, and Gomorrah, well, Lot moved to Sodom and left Abraham. And in chapter 14, disaster strikes Sodom. This is not the destruction of Sodom. That's later on. Uh, a group of kings invade and conquer Sodom, or at least they, they are able to plunder it. They take away a whole lot of the people and a lot of the, the treasure of Sodom. And among the people is Lot and his family. So Abram is inspired by God to mount a counteroffensive against these enemy kings and goes and defeats them, recovers Lot and the treasure. And what happens then is that's, that's where we're going to pick up now in Genesis 14, 17. Abraham, Abram, I should say, he, he's not Abraham yet. That'll, that comes a few chapters later has just returned from defeating those enemy kings who were led by, as you can see on the screen there, Kedor Leomor. He was the, the leader of the kings who invaded, and Abram defeated them and brings back the people and the treasure to what seems to be a, a neutral site, Salem, which is Jerusalem, ruled by the king and priest Melchizedek, this mysterious figure who Abram recognizes as being a priest of the same God Abram worships. So this figure of Melchizedek is mysterious. This is the main, this is the only story in which he appears in, in the Old Testament. So outside of Jerusalem, in the valley, outside Jerusalem, Abram meets the king of Sodom and they discuss how the exchange of the people and the, the plunder is going to happen. So let's read now from Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. After Abraham, Abram returned from defeating Kedor Leomor the, and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Sheva, that is the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I've raised my hand to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and have taken an oath that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the thong of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abram rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me to enter Eshkol and Mamre, let them have their share. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. 
I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. It's the end of our Old Testament reading. Our New Testament reading, it turns out, as it, end, as it turned out, this is not going to figure in today's message, but I wanted to include it. This is such a beautiful verse about Jesus, our Savior. Listen and let these words bless you. Hebrews chapter, two, verses, chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God, at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll continue our service now with our anthem. Our anthem it will be, is a medley. What a friend we have in Jesus. Go tell it on the mountain and when the saints go marching in.
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Does spirituality matter? Does being close to God make a difference in life? Abraham's story in Genesis shows us the difference. It is not the absence of difficulties, hardships, struggles, suffering in life. Abraham has as many as anyone else living in the land of Canaan at that time. The difference being close to God makes is not the absence of problems. It is the help of God to survive and even thrive in the midst of the problems of life. If following God, so this, is, this would be a question that someone might ask, if following God won't protect you from trouble, well, what good is it? That question, what good is it? What good does it, is it to be close to God? If you've been tracking the theme of the past few messages, you'll recognize that type of thinking, the type of thinking behind the question, what good is it? It's what we've called transactional religion or spirituality. That is religious activity and belief based on the premise that our spiritual and religious actions benefit the gods who will in turn help us get what we want. It's the basic spiritual transaction pagan religion offers. From the perspective of paganism, the question makes sense. What good is the spiritual life? What, what can it do for me? We've seen that God called Abraham out of paganism, the paganism of the, the post-Babel world, inviting Abram to enter a new type of relationship with God a family-type relationship that is based on love and care for others, not because of what they can do for you, but just because they are family, because of who they are, not based on what they can do for me. The challenge of Old Testament spirituality is to relate to God as family and through God, relate to his people, in the Old Testament, all Israel, as family. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus radically expands the boundaries of spirituality to include not just Israel, not just God's people, but the entire human race in the family. Even the enemies of God must be treated with care and kindness, the care and kindness we would show family, because Jesus died for them too. In the biblical story, <coughs> excuse me, in the biblical story, many people suffer through various difficulties, hardships, and struggles in life. The Bible teaches us that God intends th these difficult experiences, does not paper over them, they are difficult, but the Bible says God intends th th these experiences of life that, that do not feel good at the time we go through them, God intends them to draw us closer to himself. That's what the faithful life in a fallen world looks like. The Bible describes many such lives, Abraham being a premier example. We saw last week in Genesis 12, as we covered the first nine verses, sort of the, the honeymoon period of Abraham's faith life. Everything was happy and rosy between him and God. Abram seemed so devoted to God, so quick to obey, so constant in worshiping God until we got to verse 10, when a famine struck. With the stress of famine pushing Abram, he quickly goes off on his, his own way, departing from God. Yet God blessed him after those events, bringing Abram back to the promised land 
because God is merciful and gracious to his people. In chapter 13, which we have not read, it won't be part of this series, that chapter recounts another stress point. I mentioned it at the time of our reading, a stressful situation that ends with Lot leaving Abram and moving into Sodom, the city of Sodom. Chapter 14 tells the story of, of a tragedy for Sodom. Enemy kings attack and seize many of the people of Sodom and, and much plunder, including Lot and his family. Well, Abram reacts to these events when he hears about them by raising a military force to, to counterattack those enemy kings. And he successfully frees all the captives and retrieves the plunder. Today's reading in the middle, starting in the middle of Genesis chapter 14, picks up at the point when Abram prepares to meet the king of Sodom and return the people and property. Our text opens with the triumph of Abram's spiritual, of Abram's spiritual nature over the crude materialism. Abram's spiritual maturity triumphs over crude materialism. It's a significant step in his spiritual life. Abram, we discover, was satisfied with what the Lord had provided him. He can give away piles of wealth because Abram is satisfied with the blessing of God delivered to him through Melchizedek, priest of God Most High in Jerusalem. In that passage, it's called Salem, but it's the city of Jerusalem. We discover that status with God is of greater value to Abram than the worldly status that wealth and power bring. Friends, as your pastor, I must ask you, can you say the same? Does status with God matter more to you than status in the world? Well, in chapter 14, verse 22, Abram declares, I have raised my hand to the Lord. Interesting how if any of you have ever been in uh, court, you raise your, your hand to take an oath. Well, this goes back thousands of years. It was already an old, an old tradition at the time of Abraham 4,000 years ago. Abram says, I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, creator of heaven and earth, and have taken an oath that I will accept nothing belonging to you, that is the king of Sodom. Apparently, Abram pledged to the Lord that if God gave him victory over what was a vastly superior force, Abram would not take any personal gain for himself. In other words, his military adventure is not intended as a transaction to benefit himself. Rather, it's an act of caring love to, to rescue his nephew Lot. Maybe you know from experience how easy it is to make a grandiose promise and how hard it is to fulfill that promise later when the time comes. Abram and the king of Sodom meet on a, a neutral site at Jerusalem in order to divide up the spoils that Abram took back from those enemy kings. No doubt, no doubt, the spoils of his victory were heaped up in piles so that they could be divided. So Abram literally stands before a pile of treasure and now must make good on his promise to God that he would not take any of it for himself. Would Abram break the vow and take the treasure after the king of Sodom offered it to him? Can you hear the excuse? Hey, the king of Sodom says it all belongs to me. Who am I to say no to the king? Yet Abram, Abram does say no, emphatically no. I will accept nothing, nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the thong of a sandal. Abram's almost insulting in his no. In Abram's mind, his oath to God has higher value than a pile of treasure. Remaining pure in God's sight is worth more to Abram than all that treasure. 
Wow. That's deep spirituality, isn't it? Friends, this is what godly life looks like. As we grow spiritually, we, we grow to resemble God. We grow into the fullness of Christ, as, as the New Testament puts it. Abram resembles God, in this, in this case here, in Genesis 14, Abram resembles God in this way. He keeps his promise, even when it costs him greatly. That's what God did for us when God gave his only begotten son to the cross to keep his promise of redemption to us. The Bible links the events there at the end of chapter 14 that we just read. The Bible links those events to God's appearance to Abram in chapter 15, which opens with these words, after these things happen. After Abram rejects the temptation to accumulate for himself material wealth from the blessing of God, that is, God blessed Abram with a, a really a miraculous victory. Abram demonstrates spiritual maturity, honoring God with a pure heart, free from desire for material wealth. Excuse me. So in Genesis chapter 15, the word of the Lord says to Abram, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. Yes, the Lord affirms Abram's deep spiritual growth. The Lord is Abram's reward. Literally, Abram rejected the material reward just a couple verses earlier in favor of the Lord's spiritual reward. Abram's actions show us. God is himself, Abram's shield in battle, and his reward in victory. In, in a very literal sense, Abram discards the material reward, longing for the reward of the Lord's presence. And the Lord does reward him with his presence in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Abram does not desire the treasures of this world. He wants the treasure of a pure heart in God's sight, a heart unclouded by the desire to, to grasp and accumulate the stuff of this world. Like David prayed in our call to worship from Psalm 51, Abram could, could have said, Lord, create in me a pure heart. I desire it more than these piles of silver and gold. Abram so values honor in God's sight that he instantly rejects the king of Sodom's tempting offer to take the plunder for himself. Notice that spiritual growth does not exclude temptation. Rather, spiritual growth is demonstrated by our ability to resist temptation. Think back to chapter 12 last week. Abram succumbed to the temptation of fear, but now, now neither fear of the king nor greed for the treasure sway him. Such magnificent growth. What difference does spiritual, the spirituality make in our lives? Coming close to God. That's what spiritual growth means, and this is what it does for us. It changes our hearts and minds so that we begin to desire the things of God. And the things of this world, they grow dim. It's not that spiritual people hate the good things of this life. Rather, they desire the things of God so much more that taking worldly goods it no longer tempts them. How wonderful the depth of Ab Abram's spiritual development. 
that, that we witness here in chapter 14 and the beginning of chapter 15. Friends, this is biblical faith, living as if what we believe is true. That's what Abram demonstrates at the end of chapter 14. He truly believes. For Abraham, it really is true that his relationship with God, honoring his oath to God, is more important than worldly wealth and power. He easily and instantly rejects the temptation. It has no grip at all on his soul. Living inside God's heart in a state where God's desires have become my desires, this is the difference true spirituality makes in life. To live inside the heart of God, what blessedness! Contrast the transactional spirituality of paganism, where the gods are to be honored as long as they can do for us what we want, material and worldly benefits and blessings. Recognize how God has been testing Abraham. We talked about it in chapter 12 last week. I, before our reading today, I just briefly summarized the test in chapter 13. Now in chapter 14, we see yet another test. You know, Abram failed God's test in chapter 12, but now he passes the test. A test demonstrating how far away from that transactional spirituality Abram's heart has traveled. What a journey, what a spiritual journey he has been on. His heart has traveled far indeed. I hope you've learned how, how radically different biblical spirituality is from the world around Abram. And friends, it's no different for us today. Neo-paganism, it, it grows like weeds in our culture. But worse, transactional spirituality, it grows inside the church. I refer to what is generically called the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. The Bible does not promote a prosperity gospel. Biblical spirituality means learning to desire God more than prosperity in the world, more than desiring a prosperous life in this world. It means desiring honor in God's sight more than status and privilege in the eyes of people. In our text today, we find Abram advancing dramatically in faith. I urge you to strive, strive to match his spiritual growth. Now, observe what happens when we, like Abram, seek to live in God's presence. His spirit changes us dramatically. This is the difference that spirituality makes. The Holy Spirit transforms our hearts, so we desire new and different things, things that the people around us do not desire. Our values change. What we think of as what we consider important, it's no longer the same as everyone else. This is the good that biblical spirituality does for us. It changes us so that we become more like God. <coughs> Excuse me. After spending time in God's presence, the desires of our hearts begin to correspond to the desires of God's heart. Our heart starts to look more like God's heart. The values in our minds resemble the values of his kingdom, not of this world. What a radical transformation God works in us. Still, you must know it does not end here. I mentioned just a minute ago about, I, I described a little bit about how far Abram's heart had traveled on his spiritual journey, how far away from that transactional spirituality had come. Oh, he has traveled far indeed. We see that in our reading today. But he has far to go. 
consider Abram. Yes, his soul has grown marvelously deeper. But at this point in his life, in Genesis 14 and 15, he remains far from ready to become the father of the faithful, which is what God has called him to be. And we'll, we'll see more about this in future weeks. God must test him and refine his soul even further. Well, we've talked much about faith, the faith of Abram today. So let me close by reviewing what faith in the Bible means, what, what biblical faith is. Throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, faith means the same thing, trusting that God will be true to his promises, believing that God can do what he has promised and that God desires to do just that, fulfill his promises to us. As New Testament believers, we know the full depth to which God will go in order to fulfill the promise of redemption. Jesus went to his death on a cross in order to complete that mission. Now, I close for today by challenging you to walk with Abram. Study your soul examine your heart. What is in your heart? Look at it. Examine it. Contemplate your own thought life. Does your soul, your heart, your mind, do you resemble Abrams more than you resemble the people in the world around you, in your heart and soul and mind? If our spiritual maturity achieves the level of Abram in Genesis 15, which is far from ultimate spirituality, but if we achieve the level that Abram does by Genesis chapter 15, how the world would notice. Do your friends, your neighbors and co-workers, do your, your fellow students in school, do they notice how different you are from people in the world around you? As you grow closer to God, the stark difference, the difference between the things you desire, the things your heart desires, the things your mind values, the difference becomes so apparent. It, it will be so different. What you desire and value will become so different from what the people around you desire and value that people can't help but notice. They will recognize that a different spirit lives in you. So, friends, rely on that different spirit. Rely on God, the Holy Spirit, to draw you closer, closer to Jesus. Receive difficulties in life as opportunities for the Holy Spirit to do the work of spiritual growth in your heart. That is why God gives us, offers us these tests. Don't complain about hardship. Like Abram, overcome the struggles in your life by trusting the Lord to be your shield and your very great reward. Praise be to God. Amen. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, praise and honor and glory be to you, the sovereign King, the Redeemer of humanity, Draw us into your hearts today. Amen. We come now to our affirmation of faith, and Elder Donald is back with us to lead us at this time. I'll bring up, here's the affirmation. It is the Apostles' Creed that we usually use. So why don't you lead us, Donald? Let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We come now to our second hymn, which is also our final hymn. It's the Old Rugged Cross. The Old Rugged Cross is our second hymn today, and we've got some special music involved here. So Lafayette, why don't you tell us what's going to happen? Yes, uh, our violinist is back on this piece, uh, the Old Rugged Cross. And uh, instead of the, the um, congregation and choir singing the third verse, um, it will be a violin feature. So come back in on the last verse. Okay, so we've numbered the verses. When they come up on the screen in just a moment, you see them, we've numbered them, one, two, and three. The third verse, we, what we did was we skipped uh, the, the third verse from the regular music. So in between what's called on the screen, verses two and three, uh, Michi will play a solo, a solo violin for that verse. I really think that that should be wonderful. The, I think the violin is the perfect instrument on this particular song. So she'll play the third verse, and then I invite you to join the choir again on the final verse, which, as you see on the screen, will be numbered number three.
Well, we come now to offering our offering time, and I'll bring our offering information up on the screen here so that you can see it. We can receive electronic donations through the Zelle app, and you see the address there, treasurer at 4thpc.org, treasurer at 4thpc.org. And you can also mail checks to the church. You see the mailing address at the bottom of the screen. And you can actually deliver checks to the church. That's what some people like to do. Uh, we just received some today. So people are coming to the church. And you come to the Newbold side of the church, walk through the gate, and the, du and the double doors will be in front of you. There's a mail slot. Just make sure, put your, put your check in an envelope and just slide the envelope it can be just your regular donation envelope, or it could be a, a mailing envelope. Put it in some kind of envelope and just slide the check in the envelope, then through the mail slot, and we pick them up when, when we come in. So those are the ways that you can give to the church. Again, thank you to all those of you who have been generously donating, and I do pray that you'll continue supporting us in the, the days ahead. Now... We will continue with, in a moment, Lafayette will, uh, let me stop sharing here, and Lafayette will bring him up on the screen in just a moment for the offertory, and then if you remember, like we did last week, immediately following the offertory, we're going to play the doxology. If you remember, we used it three weeks ago in the annual meeting, and then two weeks ago, we started putting it uh, after the directly after the offertory, which is the place it goes in our, when we have worship service live here at the, in the sanctuary. So we're going to do that again. Well, we're going to keep doing that again. I just want to remind you a second time, that's what will happen immediately after the offertory. It'll just go straight to the doxology. So let me bring Lafayette up on the screen here so he can lead us in the offertory. <laughs> Thank you. 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen, 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 and amen. We come now to our prayer of dedication, and Elder Donald will again lead us in our final prayer for today's service. Let us pray. Merciful Father, creator of all people and the lover of all souls, we pray for your compassion on all who do not know your son, Jesus Christ. Let the gospel of Christ's death for sins be preached with grace and power to all who have not heard it. Soften the hearts of people who resist you and bring home to your fold all who have gone astray, that Jesus Christ may be the good shepherd of everyone whom you have called to live eternally in your gracious presence. Amen. Amen. We've come to near the end of the service. This is where Donald will be leaving us. So goodbye, Donald. Have a blessed week. Bye, Bye everyone. Well, we've come now to the end of the service. Thank you for joining us today to worship our Savior Jesus. Lord willing, we hope to see you, see you all next week on the next week's streaming service. So I'd ask you to receive now God's benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of God the Holy Spirit be with you with those you love and with those nobody loves this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen and goodbye. Have a blessed week, everyone. Bye-bye.